This service is for August 30th, 2020. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here to worship you this morning. As we worship you, you come and be at the center of our hearts. Please help us know you more and deeper. As we listen to your word, allow us the spiritual ears and eyes and strengthen us so that we can live by your living word. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today's scripture is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 to 22. Jade Chung is going to read it for us. Today's sermon is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 to 22. To the angel of the church in Lady Osea write, These are the words of Amen. The faithful and the truth witness of the ruler of God's creation, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from a thing gold refined and in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes I wear so you can cover your shameless nakedness and selves to put on your eyes so you can see those whom I love I rebulk and discipline so you be earnless and repine here I am I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will not come in and eat with that person and they with me to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the Lord, the churches. These are the words of the Lord. Teacher Martin Songak Cho is going to pray for us. 친구들 잘 지내고 있죠? 우리 함께 기도해요. 사랑과 은혜가 많으신 하나님 감사합니다. 우리가 한 자리에 모이지는 못하지만 이렇게 각자의 집에서 주님 말씀 듣고 또 찬양하고자 이 자리에 모였습니다. 주님 9월부터는 우리 친구들 새로운 곳에서 새로운 친구들 그리고 선생님들과 마주하게 됩니다. 주님 또 걱정도 되고 두려움도 있고 불편하기도 합니다. 주님 우리 친구들 새로운 환경에 잘 적응할 수 있도록 주님 함께 하여 주시옵소서 또 친구들한테 꼭 바라고 싶은 것이 있습니다. 우리 친구들 새로운 학기부터는 더욱더 기도를 잘하는 친구들이 되었으면 합니다. 그 기도를 통해서 주님이 우리 친구들을 얼마나 사랑하는지 깨닫게 하여 주시옵기를 간절히 바라옵나이다. 주님 예배를 시작하는 시간입니다. 끝날 때까지 우리 친구들과 함께 하여 주시옵기를 간절히 바라오며 우리 주 예수 그리스도의 이름으로 기도드옵나이다. 아멘. There was a graduation ceremony last week, last Sunday, and then we have a special message for you, those who graduated this time. Congratulations, you've made it. Hi, graduate. 안녕, 친구들. Hi, great success. 우리 사랑하는 우리 EM 졸업생 친구들 First of all, congratulations on your graduation. It was such a grateful and blessed time that we worship God together in Chojungbu with all the teachers and the friends. I want you guys to remember God told us in Bible that He knows the plan He has for us to give us hope in the future. Believe in our God who has the best plans forward to you and your life. God bless you. Take care. I love you. 모두 잘 지냈어요? 음, 오늘 졸업한 친구들 모두 모두 축하해요. 그런데 선생님이 조금 아쉽긴 해요. 우리 코로나 때문에 자주 보지 못했잖아요. 그래도 훌륭한 선생님들하고 또 함께 할거 생각하니까 마음이 조금 편해졌어요. 선생님이 졸업하는 친구들한테 꼭 부탁하고 싶은 게한 가지가 있어요. 그건 
예수님하고 친한 친구가 되는 거예요. 우리 친구들 친한 친구하고 어떻게 하죠? 맞아요. 친구들하고 많이 대화하죠. 친한 친구들하고. 예수님하고 친해지려면 그럼 어떻게 해야 될까요? 네, 맞아요. 기도를 하는 거예요. 기도를 많이 하면 예수님하고 친한 친구가 될수 있어요. 그게 바로 예수님하고 대화하는 방법이거든요. 선생님은 기도를 많이 하니까 좋은 일이 많이 생겼어요. 여러분도 선생님 말 믿고 꼭 따라서 해보세요. I really enjoyed our short and brief conversations and the visits. And I want to extend the biggest congratulations to you for your graduation from the Upper Elementary Ministry and also a successful completion of the Grade 6. And I wish you all the best in Grade 7 and also your time in the Youth Ministry. Uh, God bless you and I really pray that God is going to pour out His love to you uh, and that uh, God is going to show you His guidance for every step you take and also every choice you make. 졸업을 진심으로 축하하고 우리 친구들이 미들스쿨에 가서도 언제 어느 곳에 있든지 우리 친구들이 항상 하나님 아버지께 기도하는 친구가 되길 선생님도 기도할게. So you have the whole world in front of you. When you step into the new world. I want you to remember my favorite verses. Okay, let me read it out. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Find them around your neck, write them on the table of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 to 4. So you have the whole opportunity that shines. You can be the light and the salt of God. 어, 모두 모두 Take care. I love you. We'll really miss you and we love you. 우리 사랑하는 우리 친구들 졸업을 다시 한번 축하하고 파이팅. Okay, God bless you and we'll keep you in our prayers. Congratulations. So graduate, you made it. <laughs> yes, you have made it. And congratulations again. Okay, today's summer title is Laodicea Church. Laodicea Church must be earnest. That's the title. And as usual, I'll give you 10 seconds to share your gratitude. Think about one thing, not two, one thing that you are thankful for and share that with someone around you. I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, let's jump into the sermon. Okay, picture please. Who here likes Sprite or Coca-Cola Coke in a hot day? Next picture please. And who here likes hot chocolate in a cold day? Okay. Now I want you to imagine a cup of lukewarm hot chocolate. Lukewarm means not hot, uh, not cold. It's not really hot. It's not really cold. It's like just like a room temperature. So imagine a cup of lukewarm hot chocolate that was originally hot. It's not hot anymore. Imagine that. Also imagine a cup of lukewarm Coca-Cola or Sprite that was originally cold. There was a lot of ice, but then there's no ice in it anymore. So, would you like to drink one of these? One of these, would you? Okay, think about water now. Does anyone here like hot water? What about Cold water. Does anyone here like cold water? Like really ice cold? What about lukewarm room temperature water? Does anyone here like 
lukewarm water. So I'm hearing some of you are saying, oh, I like hot water in you know, like a cold days. And I feel like I'm hearing that you're saying, oh, I like cold water, ice cold in you know, a like really hot days, right? In a hot day. But then we don't really like lukewarm water. That's what I'm hearing now. Okay, probably not many of you would like lukewarm water. Okay, cold drink, cold water is good for summer. And hot water, hot drink is good for winter, right? Winter times. So have the image of lukewarm Sprite or Coca-Cola, like Coke, or hot chocolate or um, water, like a lukewarm, not hot, not cold water in your mind, in your head as you listen to today's sermon. Okay? Okay. Point one, background. Today we are going to talk about Laodicea Church. This Laodicea Church. Let's look at the location. Picture please. So I'm going to show you the map. Okay, where is this church? This is the seventh church. The last one of the seven series of the churches in Revelation. Did you find it? Okay, from the last church, Philadelphia Church, you go southeastward for 64 kilometers. You see number seven, almost like a right side and bottom, middle right side of the picture, of the map. It is not around the ocean. It is in the middle of kind of nowhere. Okay, so this city did not have enough water. And they had to get water from far away. It's not like a really near uh, different cities, but they're really far away. So you need to get water from there. So the problem with having the water from the cities that is quite far is that when the water get in, gets into the city, the water temperature is not good. It's not hot or not cold anymore. It's like a lukewarm water, just like we just imagined and talked about at the beginning of this sermon. And also the taste was really bad for some reasons. So people couldn't enjoy water in this city. Okay, let's talk about other aspects of this city. This city was literally rich. Let me tell you why. There were many banks and there was a good and important hospital in this city. And that hospital produces really good eye medicine in this city. Actually, I um, met a specialist eye doctor yesterday because my eyes um, I thought has an issue but then the doctor told me your eyes are totally fine so when you're healthy and no issue with your eyes you have no idea you have no idea of the importance of eye medicine but when your eyes you think you have an issue or problem then you may buy really good medicine regardless if the medicine is expensive or not. So this city, in that hospital, you could buy really good eye medicine. For that reason, they could make a lot of money. And also they had really good skill of um, dyeing the color of the ship. So that means the ship fur is normally white right but then they could change the color into black so they had they can make black fur of a ship and then they sold it they sell it and they could make a lot of money so people could make a lot of money be able to have a lot of money by doing those kind of things like selling this and they were people were really comfortable here in this city point two so what are the things they did wrong but think about this. Okay, think about the term lukewarm. Meaning again, not hot, not cold. 
lukewarm. It's not just like a water itself, but then think about the, their spiritual life. Okay, so people there were not devotional. They were not passionate. They were like, okay, we have a lot of money. God blessed us. That's what people would think there. Like, oh yeah, like they know, like we, we can make a lot of money. This is the evidence of what? The love of God. So they perhaps feel that they do not need to be more passionate about God. But then verse 16, let me read it for you. God said, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. So not hot, not cold. So I'm not going to swallow you. So I'm going to spit you out right before I spit you out. That's the kind of situation here. So people here were poor, poor. Okay, you may think, wait a moment. Did Pastor Elisha just say the people here, they are rich? Maybe you're thinking like that. You're right. You listen to me really well. But I am talking about their spiritual life. Their spiritual life is poor. They could make a lot of money by selling good eye medicine and by selling black fur of sheep. But verse 18, God says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich. That means in God's eyes, they are not rich. They are poor. And verse 18, it continually says, and white clothes to wear. So you can cover your shameful nakedness and self to put on your eyes so you can see. Okay, it shows the contrast of Simona Church. Remember the Simona Church? God told Simona Church that they are rich. All their, their actual life, although their actual life is not rich, but poor. But here God says, this Laodicea church is poor. God sees the inner being. God sees the spiritual life. That's the wrong thing, wrong doing that they were doing. They were lukewarm. They were comfortable with what they have. They couldn't have any passion towards God's word at all. So, point three. What does God want? So, God says, you're lukewarm. I'm not going to swallow you. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. I don't like lukewarm water, right? That's what God is saying. So, God is saying that you have to be earnest. That means you have to be passionate. Okay. Why did God say, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth? Does that mean God is going to leave them? I'm not going to be with you anymore because you're not hot, because you're not cold. Is that what God's saying? No, that is not. Verse 20 and 21, it says, let me read it for you. Verse 20, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and he with me. Verse 21, it says, To him who overcomes, I'll give you the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. Okay, let me show you this picture. Picture, please. What is this picture? Have you seen this picture? This is similar to today's verse. Verse 20 that I just read it for you. Jesus is standing outside and waiting for you to open the door. Jesus could open the door, but then the door doesn't have a door knob. It does not mean that Jesus cannot open the door. He can, of course, but then he loves us so much. He is waiting for us. 
to open the door. He is waiting for us to change our heart to be opened to him. Jesus doesn't want to do anything firstly. But what would happen if we open the door? Just like we have read it, we are going to be with God and Jesus. We are going to sit with Jesus Christ on his throne. Isn't this great? Okay, so you don't like lukewarm drink, don't you? Right? Okay, let me show you this. This is my favorite tumbler, quite big. Um, actually, the schools here in Vancouver, BC, they, uh, they are going to open soon for September semester. And my school actually opened this, like, uh, this week already. So teachers gather um, and then be ready for upcoming semester, academic year. And um, because of that reason, that reason, I had to come to I mean, my church, I mean, my school from 9 a.m. this morning, today. And I had a cold drink here. And I just tasted this like a, some minutes ago. And then guess what? The water here inside of this tumbler, this cup, is still really cold. I don't like lukewarm water either. I like either hot or cold. So you have to keep your spiritual life either hot or cold, just like um, this tumbler does, right? And uh, guess what? God doesn't like lukewarm water either. God wants you and this Laodicea church to be either hot or cold. That means you have to be earnest. That means you have to be passionate about God's word. Let us be used by God and let our life fulfill our purpose to the fullest. May God bless you abundantly. So this time I want you to close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Let me ask you questions. While you're closing your eyes, you may answer for my questions. Okay. How's your spiritual life doing? Is it hot? Is it cold? Or is it lukewarm? If, if it is lukewarm, why is it lukewarm? If it is hot, why is it hot? If it is cold, why is it cold? Think about the reason why. And if your spiritual life is neither hot nor cold, then what is the reason? Why is your spiritual life lukewarm? Why you are not trying to be closer to God? Why not? You are comfortable with your life? You, you think you don't need to do that? Why is it? What's the reason? From where you are now, I want you to think about this. How can you make your spiritual life hot or cold, ice cold? Either way, you can be used by God, right? Cold is not necessarily bad. It is good in some ways too. So how can you make your spiritual life hot or cold? You can maybe read the Bible every day, as usual, I'm guessing. And you can praise God, singing along. Or you can have your spiritual friend who helps each other. Or what about you think today, 
I know today is not your last day of your life, but then you can think, and um, you can think that today is the last day of my life. Then you can be earnest, right? You can have the passionate, the passion. You can be passionate. So how I gonna be doing that? Think about it. And what would the world change? And how would the world change if you become hot or end cold? And pray for God's help now. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for not leaving us, although sometimes we do the wrong things. You always lead us to the right way. Tell us what to do. We know that we need to be more passionate to your word. We need to be earnest. Help us not stay where we are, but to desire to be closer to you at all times. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.